it's Friday morning about 6.30 a.m. Um, I don't know that if I've ever made a message like this before. Um, I ask you to bear with me. I don't know how much Bible I'm going to read. Um, I'm a member of about 45 groups on Facebook. All of these groups has invited me and willingly posting my messages every day that I know of. I've made several acquaintances of people that more than likely I will never get to shake their hand. Um, these are people that owns the group pages that we're only friends over the phone and we're acquaintances. I feel like I know some of them very personal. I've got one young man that has a group called Voices of Victory. Me and him has got to be somewhat close, I'm able to share with him. He's also able to share with me. Um, I've tried to give him some advice where I could. And um, he's always been very respectful. But he produced a post that he wrote out on Facebook, on his, on his, uh, Facebook ministry page. I think he's got somewhere around 3,000 or maybe more, uh, people that are members of his page. I read his statement that he made and I don't think he would be too broken up if I was to just be honest. Um, this young man is nothing great. Um, he's definitely not ready for prime time. He's not ready for Hollywood. Um, he's a lot like me. I'll be the first one to say that I come out here and I don't really care if people think that I produce quality or whatever. I produce what I believe the Lord puts on my heart. And I believe that's what this young man does as well. But he wrote some words and I have taped it. And I'm the one that read the words that, I, that you're going to hear now. Now I titled this. A message from another man. I had nothing to do with these words that he wrote. I found it just like anyone else would. I want you to take just a few minutes to be able to hear the words that he typed out on his ministry page, and then we'll, we'll move on. escape from hell or do you have a close personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ I was thinking about my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ the other day I was also thinking about the apparent relationship or lack thereof that others have with Christ I have 
always felt there is a huge difference between being saved and being a Christian. Of course, today we use the term synonymously, but there is a difference. Being saved means you have accepted Jesus Christ's death on the cross as your own punishment for sin. Being saved means you will not go to hell. Being saved means you have a fire escape that leads to heaven. However, I think to some people that is all salvation means to them. If Jesus is just your fire escape, your heavenly reservation, your ticket to heaven, and no more you are missing what the Christian life is all about. He wants a close personal walk with you. He wants to fulfill your life. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. You are saved to serve and to walk with the Lord. As I thought on this idea, I realized that all saved people do not grow in Christ at the same rate. Some people get saved and are ready to change hell with a squirt gun. Others show little or no growth in grace. On this chart of growth, where do you, or where do I belong? If the spiritual growth chart starts at super Christian and ends with severe autistic, where am I? Am I a spiritually quadriplegic saved person? Or maybe I am just a paralegic. Am I spiritually paralyzed due to immorality in my life? Where are you on the spiritual growth chart? Saved and growing, limping in a wheelchair, crippled with sin or crutches? Or are you viable, viral in Christ, been to the well, full of Christ, ready to run, ready to jump, ready to fly? Are you saved, sanctified, sold out, sharing the gospel? holy, harmless, undefiled? Do you have a close personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ today? It is a daily walk. We need to reaffirm our walk with him each day. Being a Christian yesterday is not good enough for the day. Walk with Christ today, and you will never go astray. Where would you hear words like that? I know of people that refuse to get Facebook because they say it's so bad. This young man emptied his heart. This young man went on record and he asked a lot of questions. And I'm glad that he did. In fact, I feel honored to even know him. Because I feel like that what he shared, he shared his heart. I made some comments on his words that I printed on Facebook. All of this is on my Facebook page. If you care to see it for yourself. If this turns out to be a message that I'll post, 
then I would certainly invite you to see the evidence of his writing and the evidence of my thinking as well. I happened to tape my comments about his post. And I felt like that it would only be right to give you from my interpretation of what the words was that I used. And I want you, if you would, to just, to just listen to my words and hear what I have to say, which is nothing either. says I couldn't have said it better myself I've looked at this twice and the second time stunned me he's asking some hard questions and yes some will play it off not taking the subject serious I double dog dare you to read this with the intensity in which he wrote it when you apply his words to your own life, you can't say it didn't affect you. My advice, do a self-examination in front of the mirror. Pretend you are standing before Jesus. What would he say to you? Would you be shocked to hear him say you was just the below average child? that really didn't care, your witness was pitiful, your love for my Lord didn't matter to you, in fact, your reward is minimal. Maybe, just maybe, this word he took time to write may change two or three. The question I leave with the reader, will his writing change you? Will my reminder help someone to take this subject serious? Time will tell. God knows. I will stand on my writing too. There was a lot of difficult questions in what he wrote down to us. The Bible is full of illustrations of where men would end up in the place called hell. I didn't tell him to write them words. But here's the thing. It, it gives me hope that there's someone else that is having the same feeling that I'm feeling. I told people in my words to go stand in front of the mirror and do a self-examination. We will stand before God. Everyone under the sound of my voice will stand before a holy God. And yes, some people will say, I didn't know. Some people will even admit that I didn't understand. And you know what? God's going to know the truth. See, this video is made for the public, but I don't know who it affects. I hope it affects everyone who sees it. Because we will stand before God and we will give an account to God of the deeds of believing in the Lord Jesus and taking this, this devastation of the place called hell serious. I'm sure that many people would claim to be that I'm like Rip Van Winkle. 
and I'm the one that has to be the sharer of bad news. No, I think my my friend shared his heart. It wasn't just coming from my lips. It was coming from his lips. He has a responsibility to share the truth. I have the responsibility to help him to share the truth. And that's exactly what he's doing today. He's sharing the truth. He makes a video about once a week. I try to make one about every day. I want people to eat of the word of God. I want people to be reminded of how good God is, how wonderful that he sent his son to die on a wooden cross so that I could go to heaven. And the only way that man gets there is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we make it there. But see, the Bible is full of places of where men didn't get there. I'm reminded of Luke chapter 16. The rich man was rich. The rich man had everything going for him. But he died. And Lazarus didn't have all that much going for him. But when he died, he went into Abraham's bosom. The rich man went into torment. Do you think he would give everything he had to get out of that place of torment? I know he would. What I'm saying is, do yourself a self-examination. I don't have to wait to get in front of my mirror when I'm able to look at my phone as a mirror right now. And my words is going over the clip right now that's going to be uploaded. And I'm looking at myself right now that I'm going to stand before the Lord Jesus and give an account and give an account to God for the words that I'm saying. And my young man friend is going to give an account too. But it sounds to me like God's not going to go and say, hey, Brandon, you was out of line. No, I think what the Lord's going to do is say, well done. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant, you was willing to be faithful. And you know, that's all he requires of me is to be faithful. And he requires every Christian to be faithful. But yet there's many people that won't take time to see this video. This video is meant to help somebody. And I hope that it does. I really do. I really hope that it does. I hope that it stuns you like it did me. I read the words again this morning. I read the words tonight when I spoke into that little recorder of mine. I brought the words out that he said. I brought the words out that I said. We will stand before the Lord. Do I want to stand before the Lord complete? Do I want to stand before the Lord unashamed? I think I heard him say in his part that I don't want someone to go to hell. And I don't either. I don't either. I don't want nobody to go to that place. It was never designed for man. It was designed for the devil and his angels. 
But, you know, if man decides to not take salvation serious, then there's only two destinations that you can go to. I remember him saying that you will just not go into the grave, but that we go somewhere. And the Lord Jesus wants us to be with him. He wants to have a personal relationship with me and with you. So I hope this turns out. I hope people take this message serious. That you, whoever you are right now, you will stand before God. And you will give an account for what you heard tonight. I hope that it changes you. I hope that it will change a lot of people. Because I know how much it changed me to hear these kind of words coming from somebody else's lips. I thank y'all for listening. Um, his Facebook page is Voices of Victory. You can look him up if you'd like to tune in over there. I'm sure he would love you to tune in. If I can help you in any way, I'd be more than glad to help if I can. Elderly Ministry is how you get a hold of me here. You leave your phone number and I'll be glad to return your call. You can also look me up on YouTube. YouTube has my phone number at the bottom of each video. And you're welcome to leave a message there. If you get a hold of me and leave a message, I'll return your message. I'll do that. Time is drawing short. Time is nigh at hand, like he said in his clip. Go visit. Go visit and read what he wrote down. Thank y'all for watching.